Welcome to Business Review, a daily program that delves into the latest and most significant economic stories. From stock markets to currency news, Business Review covers the most up-to-date developments in the global financial Chinese Vice Premier Liu He called on China and the European Union to pull wisdom and gain consensus in the digital area so as to jointly address challenges and promote the construction of a community with a shared future for humanity. Liu Yi made the remarks during a China-EU high-level dialogue in the digital area, co-chaired via video link by Liu Yi and Margaret Vestager, Executive Vice President of the European Commission. The two sides had sustainable and constructive discussion on issues, including standards of communications technology, AI and the safety of non-food products, and made preparations for the China-Germany-EU leaders' meeting. Louis and Vestager agreed that it is of great importance that China and the EU further enhance communication and exchanges in the digital area against the backdrop of COVID-19 and the severely hit global economy. They said, China and the EU should grasp opportunities and seek common ground while reserving differences so as to promote the practical cooperation in the digital area. It is China's basic state policies to deepen reforms and expand opening up, said Louis, who is also a member of the political bureau of the Communist Party of China Central Committee. He added that China will continue to create a favorable market competition environment, enhance the protection of property and intellectual property rights, and intensify international cooperation on scientific innovation in the digital area. Hailing that the EU and China are playing key roles in the digital area, Vestaga said it is in line with both sides' interests to strengthen digital cooperation. The British Minister Michael Gove says Britain's internal market bill is an economic measure that gives a legal framework for the country's market post-Brexit, describing legislation that has provoked a row with the European Union. Gove, who leads the government's work on implementing the divorce deal, told the parliamentary committee that the important thing to stress about the UK internal market bill is that it is primarily an economic measure. Emergency talks in London between EU and UK representatives failed to clear the bloc's concerns. One EU diplomat characterized comments by Gove as verbosity, while another said the bloc's concerns have not been cleared at this stage. After Britain explicitly said it would act outside international law by breaching the withdrawal agreement, EU negotiators are trying to gauge how to deal with London after four years of long Brexit talks. Cuba will soon devalue the peso's one-to-one -one exchange rate with the dollar for the first time since the 1959 revolution. Before the end of this year, authorities are expected to unify the two domestic currencies, keeping the peso and eliminating the convertible peso, also fixed on par with the dollar for state business activity, but exchanged with the public at 24 pesos. The measures are part of a package of reforms aimed at fighting crisis and scarcity caused by tough U.S. sanctions, the pandemic and bureaucratic inefficiency of the Soviet-style economy. The government hinted in July it would adopt the monetary reforms and other measures, such as loosening centralized planning and restrictions on small businesses, first called for by the government a decade ago. Domestic and foreign experts forecast economic activity will drop by nearly 10% this year, after stagnating in 2019 and government officials have admitted a lack of convertible currency has forced postponement of debt payments and drastic cuts in fuel, food 
and other vital imports. Economists have long argued that the one-to-one -one official exchange rate, different rate through the convertible peso for the population and various exceptions by sector, stime exports and encourage imports because a dollar earned is accounted for as a peso and vice versa, making it difficult to decipher if the company is profitable. While Cuba will soon have just one currency, the government began allowing the dollar to circulate electronically with a bank card a year ago and is opening stores offering everything from used cars and domestic appliances to food and hygiene products. Sources said they expected the dollar stores to increase at least in the short term to provide stability and capture greenbacks to import goods. South Korea is preparing its fourth supplementary budget for this year of around $6.6 billion to aid struggling small businesses facing mass closures amid unprecedented social distancing restrictions to curb a resurgence of the coronavirus. At an emergency economic policy meeting held on September the 10th, President Moo Jae-in said the fresh spending of 7.8 trillion won will be used to help small businesses and households. Moon told the meeting that the unexpected resurgence of the virus is delaying the recovery momentum. Of the new budget subject to parliamentary approval, 3.2 trillion won, that's about $2.7 billion, will be used as cash payments to small businesses. Another 1.4 trillion won will support struggling job seekers. The fourth extra budget of this year comes to the top of 277 trillion won, that's about $233 billion of stimulus pledged so far. Strict social distancing rule imposed since late August have hurt restaurants, hospitality and retail sectors as the government banned on-site dining after 9 p.m. and limited coffee franchises to takeout and delivery. Statistics show Korea from Korean data show the number of self-employed businesses were down by 128,000 in July from a year earlier to 5.5 million marking the biggest annual drop since 2009. Australia's Foreign Minister Maurice Payne held a video conference with her ASEAN counterparts on September 10th. On the sidelines of the 53rd ASEAN Foreign Ministers meeting, hosted by Vietnam. Haynes said during the video conference that as ASEAN's longest-standing dialogue partner, it is natural for Australia that ASEAN should play such a central role in responding to the shared challenges of their times, including COVID-19. Australia's vision for the Indo-Pacific has ASEAN at its absolute centre. During the summit, ASEAN ministers were expected to seek collaboration to fight global threats and to try to de-escalate a tit-for-tat US-China rivalry as the world's two biggest economies vie for influence. Russia, Japan, Australia, South Korea and India were among other countries remotely joining an event hosted by Vietnam that will include a 27-nation security forum, as concern grows about rhetoric in accidental conflict and about other countries being caught up in the fray. The 10 ASEAN members are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. This has been Business Review, your daily source for the most critical financial stories. Tune in next time for the latest financial news impacting the world economy.